<laughs> yes, yes, yes. Hello, world. Welcome to D&D Beyond. So yesterday, the Spirit Board tease got released, and today it is official. Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, the newest D&D source book, has been announced. It's available for pre-order now on the D&D Beyond Marketplace. Link in the description. You'll get a bunch of spooky pre-order goodies and instant access to the book when it's officially released May 18th, 2021. Uh, we are here to, to dive in to everything we know about the book, discuss the possibilities, speculate our cold, dead hearts out about the adventures to come. I'm joined, of course, by B. Dave Walters, who you know from everywhere. Uh, Riley Silverman, an incredible comedian and DM of The Broken Pack at Saving Throw. And Melly Doucette, our amazing community manager. I'm Joe Starr. I'm the content boy at D&D Beyond. And uh, I'm the face you're going to see on camera until I find someone better to be the face to be on the camera. Uh, hey, th this book looks amazing. First first reaction, just from images and spirit boards. What do you guys think? I'm excited. I'm really looking forward to a lot of what's happening with it. I think it's, it's a really cool flavor uh, boost, so I'm excited to see what's going on with that. Uh, yeah, I'm super pumped. Uh, gothic horror has been like one of my favorite things since I was a little kid, and so getting more of that that's not just Strahd uh, is going to be kind of the best thing in my D&D &D life. <laughs> and yeah, I, I know you like uh, spooky stuff. Uh, how, how, how are you feeling? I kind of live my life split evenly between D&D &D and vampire. So being able to play yeah. vampires in D&D &D is pretty much just like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's perfection. Yeah. And, and well, yeah, because I'm, I mean, I remember back when Ravenloft was a full campaign setting, and of course it had a lot of extra depth and richness that people got a taste of in Strahd, and I'm definitely excited about being able to dive much deeper now with this. No, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, I, not unlike you, Dave, with Vampire, I cut my teeth. My, my tabletop introduction was the World of Darkness setting with Vampire and Werewolf and all kind of stuff, so being able to take the kind of games I was playing then and marry them into my D&D playing now is very exciting. Absolutely. Yep. I, uh, man, my my tabletop horror introduction was trying to play vampire, and then having my parents in Kentucky immediately not let me play vampire. Yeah. So uh, finally, I'm a grown boy, and they have no say. <laughs> you can play all the vampires you want. That's true. I can play all the vampires I want. So let's jump into. Don't have a little vampire as a treat. Yeah. Yeah. Just like a little, a little, because I did good. Uh, so mm -hmm. obviously, uh, like we're saying, Curse of Strahd, Ravenloft, uh, obviously. A little popular, right? And so uh, the big thing with this book, the the boundaries, if you will, of Ravenloft, uh, which is more of a state of mind than a place, uh, are being further explored with the introduction of 30 different domains of dread. So these are all different horror-themed settings to test the metal and morals of your players. Uh, just like Strahd and his kingdom, each domain will feature its own twisted dark lord with their own goals and machinations. Uh, I'm so excited about this. Uh, so I'm, I'm just going to run through the ones that they've announced, uh, and let's, uh, let's just shout about them for a few minutes. Okay. Sound good? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. So, uh, domains and announced discussed so far at the, uh, at the book's recent press event, uh, include, uh, uh, Lemuridia, uh, which is a frigid vision of like mad science gone wrong. Uh, the surreal dark fairy tale masquerades of Dementialu. Treachery and intrigue uh, with encounters in these dark rainforests in Kalakiri and uh, endless zombie nightmares in Falkovnia. Uh, and then further teased and suggested and kind of hinted at were even like more, more flavors of horror, uh, most dangerous game type stuff, traditional ghost story type stuff, and even a D&D spin on Cosmic Dread. So if you are a horror fan... Uh, and you've been kind of waiting for some D&D guidance on how to approach some of this stuff in your games. Like, this is it. Uh, all that said, uh, w what domain are y'all heading to first? Oh, boy. I think maybe the mad scientist one. I think that's the one that maybe, like, gets my gets me excited to sink my teeth into. Uh, that fairy tale masquerade, I am already... I don't know, like, what they're going to do with it, but I'm already just imagining like describing to players like as these masks get taken off and there's just nothing underneath or there's just like flesh and muscle and bone and I'm like mm, yes yes I want it mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. there's a distinctly like Dr. Frankensteinish looking thing in the art uh mm -hmm. that that's that's yeah heading that way the like uh almost um almost horror steampunkish intersection there seems mm -hmm. really interesting 
Yeah, felt uh, uh, even feel like maybe like a little bit of a Mass Effect feel, mm -hmm. uh, which I, I which I'm very very into. Uh, you know, as a as a as a Cthulhu boy, uh, I I can't wait to just dive a little further into uh, cosmic horror uh, with D and D, and I'm super excited to kind of see what their spin on is it because you know they, that that's the cool thing about D and D is they sort of they're able to take what you know, tilt it. Oh. In also, their own direction. also, for people that like might not be overly familiar with the with the setting of Ravenloft, I mean, it is it both is and isn't a physical place. Uh, it's kind of like nestled in the edge of the Shadowfell over there, where it's like don't go in the shadowy part of the Shadowfell. But yeah. it's um, you have these the the domains of dread are are created by their their dark lords, and they're a reflection of their dark lord. Like uh, I mean, every the place tells you something about the person. Barovia is the way it is expressly because Strahd is the way that he is. You know, Darkholm is the way it is, because or Darkon, rather, because Azalan is the way that he is, you know? So having these places that are kind of these, like, they're almost like bubbles um, yeah. in this, like, pot that is this terrible place, that these, like, great cosmic entities have sort of like trapped everyone in is really interesting to me so being able to like find the limits and the parameters of that and in and, and what lay beyond it if anything beyond madness is uh is exciting to me too because th that's what Ravenloft was it was the Cthulhu mythos it was the you know the gothic horror mythos it, it was uh the heavily inspired by the universal monsters at the time you know just being able to tell like a like a spooky type thing like me my for me, my touchstones in these stories are Van Helsing, uh, the movie Van Helsing, yeah. which I love just <laughs> unrepentantly, the the Hugh Jackman Van Helsing, and the Johnny Depp Sleepy Hollow. Like those are those are Ooh. my posts for the tone that I that I'm definitely trying to bring to this kind of thing, and it looks like super excited about that. Yeah, uh, something I, I, I'm really fascinated about is like the idea of and uh they talked to us a little bit about it uh sort of in the presser for this um but you know like the idea of you know a zombie setting um first level zombies who cares right usually yeah. in D, &D uh your, your first level character doesn't even need a, a a class associated with it and first level zombies would be no threat but like the idea of sort of like taking some things that we already know uh that are kind of well-worn territory and spinning them a little bit okay like a couple of zombies is no big deal for your adventuring party uh but they're in a crumbling city and there's zombies everywhere you know you you open the wrong door and 15 of them fall in um and there's nowhere to run there's nowhere to hide like that's i i love uh just that that little bit of extra flavor and guidance for dms to really be able to make some of this stuff scary yeah, you yeah, only get two uses of turned on dead as a cleric. So once you're out of those, you're pretty much back to, yeah. 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 Yep. yeah. And like what I love about horror, just as a genre, is that it is very much about like, uh, what does this horror mean? What is it? And that's what Bide was saying with like these kind of lords of darkness and whatever that exist in these realms. What do all these things mean to them? Like, what do these zombies mean to whatever that the realm lord of that one is because that's going to add so much to what like all of the characters that come into there what are they interacting with on a like story and character and relationship level with that person yeah well yeah, yeah and, and to, you know they released the unarthur arcana the new bloodlines one of them being reborn that you're basically a diet undead um i, I could see a, a lot of things like if you're in the domain of dread that is all undead and you're this person that returned but didn't quite return uh mm -hmm. you know that's like very rich storytelling soil there to draw on also no absolutely well and uh you know just sort of the idea of uh we can pivot into talking about some of this character stuff that's in here too because i think some of this is pretty cool so uh the unearthed arcana you know like b dave mentioned uh the dampier the hex blood um uh, these are and uh the unborn uh, these are, you know, obviously a kind of a warm up, right? I, I, I suppose for the book. Uh, but these are, you know, vampire lineages. These are hag lineages. These are undead lineages. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm super excited about this idea of, um, you know, adding that little bit of like horror flavor. And there's going to be other ways we'll, we'll get into them. But even just, just that, you know, like, um, are you sick of playing your your level 10 you know character that you've been playing for a couple years and you need a new angle 
and let them die. <laughs> you know, <laughs> let them die in Ravenloft, man. Uh, there's there's a lot of cool stuff. You know, death kind of isn't the end here. I don't think yeah. really it also it really kind of builds on what they started doing with Tasha's, where we're really breaking away from the idea of racial concepts being these fixed like ethnic aspects of characters, and we're getting these other ideas mm -hmm. of characters that it's more about lineage or having this. Thing that's affected them like we were talking off mic earlier about the cynic hybrids in ravnica and how that is a way you could play a character that breaks out of the mold of what your like race is like so you're not playing an elf as much as you're playing this hybrid character and same with these right? yeah yeah i was interested it, it, it very excited to see that because you know again y'all know i kind of been neck deep in that for a few years now that particular yeah. uh evolution and quite frankly to watsi's eternal credit in in many ways my career exists because of their efforts to diversify and figure out ways to improve and in and, and increase that and I, I think they've they've landed on something unique here i'll tell you i was uh this is uh, working on on an upcoming project and i was talking to one of the character or one of the players and this was a couple this was about a month ago and i was like oh you maybe play a down a dom peer that was a, that would work for this and they were like i don't know what that is and i'm like yeah it's one of the playable races and I'm, they were like i've never heard of it and i put them like yes yeah, in D, D beyond and i pull it up and it's not there and i'm like i know this was a thing and i really <laughs> was like driving myself crazy i'm like i know this was a thing and it so happens, I talked to somebody over at Watsi, and it was a playtestable race during Ravnica. So it was, but then it got taken out. Yeah. And then, like, two weeks after that, came back <laughs> as yeah. this. So I was like... So Those UAs mess you up. Like, you're like, oh, a the UA's there, and it's gone. You're like, oh, yeah. no. Like, yeah, yeah. I made a, I made a, a Raven Queen uh, Warlock, and then it was gone. I was like, oh, no, I had, like, rebuilt mm -hmm. my own character again. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, all I know is, you know, when I first saw the Unearthed Arcana, I was like, oh, I have an idea. And now it's it's 100% going to happen. Uh, I want uh, to create uh, a Frankenstein's monster uh, type, either Grung or uh, Lokatha, who's just built of just different <laughs> oh fish parts. Like, Thanks, I hate it. Bunch of just sewn up. Yeah, just smells terrible. Nope. Doesn't really speak. Uh, mm -hmm. But has sad, sad memories of being a school teacher in its in its former life. You know, just with this. Uh, I, I'm so excited. Oh, so I, feel so bad I need to learn how to make. I need to learn how to make my own Colin Robinson style vampire. Now we have this going. That's going to be my. Yeah. Well, it, <laughs> I, be I have a, a for for an upcoming thing. I just made a character yesterday that is going to be a reborn. That is going to be a level two foresight wizard, level four grave cleric who's obsessed with death because they've already <laughs> died once and they know it's coming. And so, like, uh, they're like disjointed and out of time now, and like it's like Final Destination. Yeah, it's, uh, it's like, like they, he, they they died, and now like they can't get over. Like it's like okay, we get it, you died. It's all they talk about anymore. It's kind mm -hmm. of annoying. Yeah, you know. Well, they it, can get it. And also, sure. get it. You went to Burning Man. We got it. <laughs> reborn. I think for some reason I keep calling it Unborn, which is a whole different weird uh, yep. thing. Thank you, Reborn. Sorry about that. Reborn. Uh, yep. Uh, beyond the lineages, uh, we've also got um, uh, these really cool new subclasses coming. Uh, mm -hmm. So we have uh, the College of Spirits for bards. Yeah. The Ouija uh, bard. Yeah, the Ouija bard. Ouija um, bard. I love I mean, it. Every college is a College of Spirits if you do it right, but still. Yeah. I mean, true. Oh. Again, we get it. You went to Burning Man. Ouija's <laughs> Castle, baby. Going to Ouija's <laughs> Castle. Uh, and, and it's a spirit board. Trademarks. Um, uh, but yeah, so uh, the idea of... Um, you know, these storytellers that can draw upon, you know, dark folklore and powerful stories from the past, uh, which I think is, you know, very, very cool. Uh, you know, just the traditional uh, campfire of uh, gather around, assholes, and I'm going to tell you the dark story of the summer camp. I, I love the idea of yeah. a hard based in that. Um, uh, we also have the, the Undead Pack Warlock. Uh, which, uh, you know, is kind of some cool flavor for people who want to make a deal with something like really, really awful, you know, at the, at the cost of their soul. As opposed to most warlocks who make people right, yeah. pleasant, <laughs> so delightful, yeah. sweet friends. I'm just yeah. saying, okay, nothing, nothing bad can come from making deals with liches, kids. Nothing <laughs> bad. No negative repercussions whatsoever. Never. There's never been a warlock who's like, no, I made a deal with Steve. It's been fine. Like, yeah. every we, we check in every I don't regret months. it at all. Yeah. It's never caused me any problems. Fantastic. We have a coffee. And catch you can up have and... a celestial pack warlock. You can have super happy yeah. fun time in your warlock pact. That's I mean, it's true. I would make it like grim, 
traditional fae <laughs> celestials where they're like, no, I'm still awful. I'm just differently awful. Yeah. But yeah, I yeah. still own you. You're not yeah. a cleric. A pact <laughs> is a pact. Is a pact. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> just, you just got good terms on your loan. That's all. Yeah. Right. <laughs> For now. For now. Until it comes exactly. time to collect. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. So uh, additionally, with this stuff is uh, an idea that sort of got teased. We don't know a ton about sort of mechanics or, or anything like that. But uh, 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 this, this idea of dark gifts, which are benefits bestowed uh, with deadly costs that provide even more role-playing ties to uh, the different domains of dread. Mm -hmm. uh, so the one that we did sort of talk about was actually uh, part of the art, that amazing piece of tiefling art in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the opening video that we showed, uh, who's just literally haunted by you know, different spirits and ghosts that sort of follow, follow them around, uh, which is a little similar to... Um, you know, uh, a couple of background choices that already exist, but I love the idea of these adding some mechanical advantage. And, yes. You know. Well, there's kind of already precedent for that now, too, with Theros, because I, I've run a game in Theros and I play a game in Theros, and you basically start the game with a supernatural gift, which is basically like a, you're essentially a champion of the gods in that realm, and so you start the game with a blessing from the gods, and they can just be feats that already exist, but there's some that are included in the book already as specifically supernatural gifts that do give you a mechanical advantage. So I think it's probably building on that same thing, but giving it more of a darker flavor and like a, yeah. a bit of a way yeah. that it might maybe have more of a negative effect, because like in Theros, you're playing larger-than-life characters who are champions, but in this, you're probably playing someone who's got a little bit more baggage and a little more things dragging them down, so exactly. these gifts are going to have a negative side, too, which is so fun to roleplay. Play. Yeah, it kind of gives like this flavor of like kind of the suggested devil deals that are in Descent into Avernus where like, yeah, yeah. you're going to get this really cool thing, but there's a bad thing that ties into this and you're yeah. probably going to regret it later. No, sure probably, I think print. there's actually there's actually an Avernus Easter egg in there somewhere. If you look carefully, I think there's a, there's some there's some familiar props on that table. See, Dave, you were saying? Uh, uh, I was just going to say that it something I'm interested to see if they do is in the old days uh, here back, back in back in my <laughs> day when we played Ravenloft and had to calculate taco and armor class by, by hand um, there there was a, a madness mechanic where Ravenloft wears you down if you stay there too long uh, similar to the Cthulhu mythos games where you're just driven out of your mind I'm interested to see if they bring that back because I could see it go either way in the sense that um I think all things being equal, people are more cognizant of the portrayals of madness in storytelling. Yeah. Uh, but the fact that just the environment of Ravenloft is very crushing and oppressive in like being at the bottom of the ocean, I feel should be accounted for somehow. Uh, yeah, and, uh, like it could uh, be like corruption or like yeah. despair instead of like something that's strictly yeah. associated with uh, like mental there, illness. There was yeah. definitely some talk of like, um, you know, the idea of uh, really testing the limits of your character's morals and what they will and won't do in, you know, in these realms. Because that's, I mean, that's that's a key part of horror, right? You know, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, a demon is attached a puzzle box to you, you know, how's that going to affect your day-to-day -day and the choices you make? Um, I, I, I would, I, I agree. I, I, you know, as, as a person who doesn't, you know, love fixed alignments uh, yeah. uh that much I, I i love the idea of kind of deep and uh, deep dive of exploring some of that stuff and really kind of seeing characters just come out of this stuff completely broken i like breaking characters yeah. i mean yeah but yes. again that's it, it is a joy um uh, as, as ivan van norman once said to me you must hurt them it is the only way to gain their love <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it, it, I'm similarly with alignment in the sense that um, I think they're good universal rules, but I mean, I personally can rationalize almost anything from almost any alignment as long as it made yeah. sense to them then. And I never want to be in a position where I'm dictating to someone else, that's not what your character would do yeah. As, yeah. as a being with free will. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, it can, sure, you know. Um, and I think the game also was built more heavily around that. I mean, I'm certain the game was built more heavily around that in terms of, you know, paladins um, losing their oaths and from the things they did and have that being just like a really like crushing, devastating consequence. You know, now Oathbreaker's a subclass, you know, <laughs> and it's kind of metal, actually. So, um, <laughs> oh, I can't yeah. wait to, Something to aspire to. Exactly. Right. You're like, I just took the oath to break it. So, yeah. yeah right. Yeah. 
I can't there's wait a lot of to. fun with shifting alignments where you can then actually move into those subclasses. Like there's yeah. nothing, nothing to say that you can't be a different like a different oath and then mess up so badly your DM's like boom now you're an oathbreaker. This is what you're doing now. Same thing with like Avernus where you go in and sometimes the things that you are on the physical realm are different when you go to the nine hells. Like the way that your familiars change, the way your spells are cast differently. I always play if you're playing an Asimar when you go into Avernus you become a fallen Asimar no matter what kind you were before. Like that kind of stuff is I think really yeah. fun to play with. Yeah. yeah, and look if there if you know if there's like they're teasing like this sort of like battle royale uh we're just being forced to hunt other people kind of like horrible most dangerous game uh kind of thing oh, i can't wait to just toss a bunch of jerk nose up paladins <laughs> together <laughs> yeah it's basically fortnite like dnd fortnite <laughs> I, yeah um, oh, I, you know what i don't hate that look i don't I, either i, do, I like, like it <laughs> if i can if I can, uh, uh, I mean, it's enough to keep one home game going on a regular basis, but if I can pull off two and they're both on the same island doing different stuff and then I can bring those groups together, I will be the greatest DM of all time. Uh, I did that I did that in a Star Wars game. There's a group of Jedi and a group of Jedi hunters. I will be the second greatest DM of all time. Directly nice. after B.J. Walter. <laughs> 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 We're only arranged by height, Joe. Purely by height. That is, that is the, only, <laughs> the only standard, you know? Yeah, it's... Uh, e this you know you talk about like the paladins and the morality and all of that like for me like my favorite character are like like darth vader is my favorite character of of all media like anywhere ever like in you know uh the 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 darth vader character the arthas manethel character the bright shining hero who falls from the best intentions who meant well and mm -hmm. all along, people are like, bro, you see where this is going, right? And he's like, nah, it's going to be fine. And you're like, oh, <laughs> you know, like, I, like I, I like being able to, to play with that. And this one seems very much like tailor made for that. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it's, in, and I think also for, for people that don't necessarily understand what makes horror horror, horror is not necessarily gore i mean there could be a gore component but there's plenty of gore in yeah. most games of DD. it's just you know for the most part if you you know you come around the corner and there's an ogre you're going to fight the ogre and you're probably going to beat the ogre like the the expectation of success is very heavily weighted towards the characters like you can lose you can die because if you didn't there'd be no point playing really but you know, the odds are very much on your side pretty much all the time in D&D, &D, yeah. especially with all of the ways that you've got to, like, you know, resurrect the dead and things like that. Like, yeah. especially the, the, the further you pro you progress, the less death becomes your fear, which is funny because, you know, my specialty is level 20 and everybody's like, level 20 is so hard. I'm like, nah, level one's hard. You know, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. you've got yeah. a lot of options well, by 20. Even on the meta side, you know, you yeah. got a DM who's like, no, you're going to live because you got to see X, Y, and Z. And mm -hmm. it's 30 pages exactly exactly whereas in, in a horror genre when you hear something scratching at the walls in the night grabbing your sword and running straight towards it may not be the play man yeah <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's the that's the appeal of a setting like this and expanding a setting like that. I think that one of the complaints that I still hear about D and D, even in Five E, where it, it leans so much more heavy to role play, is that still so much of the text is still based around combat and based around action and spells and things like that. And there is some degree to that, but I think that that's what's so fun about these newer settings or or I should say expansions of older settings a lot of times. But like these setting books, these source books, where you're giving players new places to play in that are going to force the game to be more role play heavy than they may have been used to in the past, even with a D&D &D setting that was designed for more role play. Yeah, well, I think that's why Curse of Strahd is so popular is because there is all that opportunity. There's all of these really interesting uh, mini stories happening in that world that, you know, kind of invite your characters to make bad decisions or you know have questionable choices which leads to role playing which leads to them being really invested in it uh mm. which i think you know is a really really good sign for this book of having that same thing but now in 
30 domains, which is amazing. Yeah. And so I, I will say, even as you're thinking about, you know, bringing this to your table and running a game, you know, check in with your players in advance too, yes. because mm -hmm. it can go very much awry if somebody's thinking I'm the barbarian, I kick in the door and I kill it with my ex in a world where mm, maybe you don't though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And but even just I, to make sure your players' comfort levels, like yeah. this is, this is a session zero dependent game. I feel like this is a buy-in. Like you were saying earlier, Dave, about like, about the, I hurt you to make you feel joy or that kind of thing. I think that that is like a, a definitely a way that a lot of DMs will approach this game. And I think mm -hmm. that is going to be a lot of fun. I think that make sure your players want that kind of game exactly, before you yeah. suddenly throw I it agree. on them in the middle of a session. Like if you've been playing for a year and then your, your DM's like, hey, we're going to Ravenloft now. We're going to go to these realms of dread. It's like, oh, oh, we... I, I joined I joined this game to play pirates on a boat like I didn't I, I didn't yeah, hey. join to, to sell my soul to to fight yeah so I think there's a lot to that yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and it can also be really touchy with just different people's fears and phobias like I have some people I play with one of them who is like phobia level afraid of spiders so when yeah. we play Dini there's no spiders in those worlds same my yeah. friends you know yeah. like zombies in the same way there's no zombies in those worlds so like kind of making sure that everybody feels <laughs> safe at the table even if the characters aren't safe is a huge huge important thing with horror yeah, yeah. The, like you know at least having the lines and veils talk is always useful in general but you're right i mean water deep dragon heist for the most part probably not gonna trip over anything but when you're playing a game that is expressly designed to shock and torment uh yeah you definitely need and and, and people also might discover in real time stuff that bothers them like this this happened yeah. to us during uh beyond heroes where uh i, I won't say who because i don't need to have, bust anybody out for their phobias but turns out somebody had a real problem with teeth even they didn't know that but like i think it was like we were uh fighting some monster and it was just like very graphically described like it's long with like curving fangs and like chunks of meat stuck in them and stuff and it like really wigged them out they were like i didn't know i didn't yep. know but I can't, you know, yeah. <laughs> I can't, can't and, do you it. Know, I think, you know? uh, I think it's it's good too. I think uh, for DMs who are, you know, still uh, maybe a little bit like I don't know about like, you know, these check ins and stuff like that. I kind of want to do what I want to do. I look at them as a benefit, right? Yeah. Uh, because it, it, it's a it, it's like getting a note from a from a from a coworker on something you wrote or something like that. It can only help you improve. Uh, the 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 last recent the last horror horror thing I did that I'm that I was really proud of, you know, I, I checked in with my players ahead of time and was like, okay, what are you know what are our what are our absolute no's, you know, that kind of thing. Um, you know, this is going to be a weird psychological thing that with that's just like gaslighting on gaslighting on gaslighting, and you know, someone was like, uh, uh, not into tumors, and I like looked down at my page with that just featured monsters that were just covered in them. And I was like, okay, cool. I was very proud of these. Uh, what can I do to make them better? And I feel like what I came up with was not only cooler, but it also like changed the trajectory of, mm -hmm. of my story and it changed my, my monsters and kind of the idea of what was going on. So it was really cool. Uh, and I know this book um, to speak to uh, both this, our sort of session zero talk here. Uh, this book comes with sort of guidelines, not guidelines, but like guidance to sort of how to talk to your players about horror and what they are and aren't comfortable with. But it also comes with, uh, B. Dave, you mentioned uh, for people who don't really sort of understand like what horror is and what it can do, offers a lot of story hooks and guidance for uh, for how to really dive into this and really implement. So if you're like basic haunted house stories, that's for babies. Like this book's going to come with a lot of really ways for, for you to really run like a hell of a haunted house story. I have a feeling 100%. too it's going to pair really well with Candlekeep. I feel like you're going to be able to take the mysteries yes. of Candlekeep and then move them into the realms of this book, the domains. It's going to be really fun to see how those two work together. Yes. Also available for pre-order on dndbeyond.com. <laughs> but guys, yeah, sorry. Uh, that was a, a poorly timed coffee drink. Uh, the, <laughs> no, but, uh, it was perfectly time for the ad. That's it great. was just yeah. enough time for everybody to go and open up Beauty Beyond. Right. Yeah, yeah, open yeah. yeah. Wait here yeah. while you do it. This, yeah. yeah. All the cool kids <laughs> are pre ordering it. I'm just saying. Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah, but and, to build on what you were saying, Joe, I think that I, as a DM, I don't think I've ever really felt limited by a player's boundary. I think a player's boundary has always given me the ability to like think outside the box and do different things with it. Like I, yeah, like you mentioned, I had a player. I was running Fan Delver, and we found out in real time that she had a phobia of spiders, and I had I should have checked ahead of time, considering the villain of Fan Delver is named the Black Spider and has a lot of spiders, <laughs> and so I had to go through and kind of like all, all my maps. I had to replace all the spiders that were like pre-gen with with other icons and it ended up being like we had a, like a lot of fun with it we made it like a more mechanical monster like a automaton thing and 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 it made it way more fun for her i think than it would have if yeah. i had just done it as written Absolutely. well that's yeah, one I... of the great things with like D and tabletop games is that we are just collaboratively coming up with this thing together so when somebody has a line or a veil or something that they want to add to the game hmm. that's just going to make the experience better for everybody because now they have an extra investment in it and you're putting extra investment in it like you were saying joe with that you made your game better because you changed that monster and like you were saying the automatons made it better that's how we game together instead of just writing a book all by ourselves absolutely it's like yeah. watching a tv show and being on twitter like they're not doing it the way that i want to do it well here's the opportunity to have the person making the show do it the way that you want to do it yes. sorry bd if i interrupted you twice i apologize no, no, no. I, I was, I was just yes ending, and I was going to say we we ran into that recently on uh, same thing into the Motherlands. We we designed these creatures that were basically eyeball spiders. Turns out one person had a phobia of both spiders and eyeballs. Oh, and no. we're like, yeah. I mean, you couldn't have known, but now we know, and uh, you know, adjust accordingly. Yeah, that's. Uh, yeah. But but I think by the same token, I will tell you this though: if you're wondering uh, why you play this game when, when we were doing we're alive frontier, uh, I didn't know that Ivan was one of the publishers of the game, uh, the outbreak undead system. And we're playing, it is just a very, just grueling and unforgiving system. And I said at one point, I'm like, why does anybody play this game? Like it's Friday night. You could be doing anything. Why does anybody do this? And <laughs> fast forward, once we went through some of this stuff, uh, it is such a very different cathartic experience when you fight and struggle and are really afraid and overcome yeah. something, it yeah. resonates in a very different way than the glorious heroism of we're here to slay the dragon because it's the right thing to do yeah. versus we were pinned down and just fighting for our lives and just trying to make it out of there and yeah. managed to like set the barn on fire and, and ran for our lives. And it's, it is a very exciting and fulfilling experience. If you haven't played a horror game, this will be a fantastic introduction. Yeah, and uh, you cued me up perfectly for for my final thought on this. That's what I do, Joe Star. It, it just uh, it, uh, it's amazing. Um, uh, it was like we were in like a really cool volleyball anime together. And just, I, I lead, sorry. I lead the league in assists. Yes. Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, but you know, just we we play tabletop games for these shared experiences, share a story with each other, and but. But then there's also that communal feeling of like why we watch horror movies together. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, when I was in a packed theater for the first paranormal activity and the audience got trained as that security cam footage would slow down, that meant something scary was going to happen. You, everyone together would be like, oh my God. And so like merging those experiences, there's just nothing like it. And that, that's why I'm so stoked about this book. Uh, uh, I should let the three of you go on about your day and this audience to, to go on about their day. Uh, and by... Their day, I mean, going and pre-ordering uh, Guide to Ravenloft. Uh, any closing thoughts, Riley? I think I'm gonna follow what B. Dave said. I think I think the same thing with I've played some horror games. I've I've played like in Ten Candles, where you know your characters are going to die by the end of the session, and you begin the game with that in your head. It doesn't mm -hmm. take away from the fun and the collective experience you have telling it. So I'm really excited to take stories like that. And, you know, I joked earlier about Colin Robinson, but I would love to run a more comedic horror game using this setting. I think that this, just because it's horror doesn't necessarily mean it has to be completely terrifying and yeah. a slog for your players. There's going to be ways using this setting and all the rules in it to play the fun games that you're used to playing. So I, totally I, right. I think that, yeah, I think what we do with the Shadows kind of themed game would be really fun to do. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to it. Ghostbusters is horror. Uh, uh, yeah. Scooby-Doo is horror. Horror's attacks. Right. Gremlins. Horror's attacks. Yeah. Uh, Tim Gremlins 2. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. is, Especially uh, Gremlins 2. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Melly, any any final thoughts? Uh, honestly, just, you know, 
copy exactly everything Riley just said. Uh, you know, just setting those expectations at the beginning of like, hey, you're all gonna die at the end, and then it's like a cool journey to the end, like in Ten Candles, which is my favorite game. Oh my god. Uh, or again, the campy thing, or the we're just gonna <laughs> process our trauma as a group. This is a group therapy session. Telling a trauma through horror is a, one of my favorite parts of horror because, as I said before, I love to cry. It's my favorite hobby. So I'm excited for kind of all of those different avenues to explore in these domains of dread. Absolutely. B Dave? Uh, Melly, you should play a game called Alice is Missing if you haven't. Uh, I did a stream of it yesterday on Good Time Society of Alice is Missing. That will be your jam because I cannot believe the Tin Candles is anyone's favorite game. So yes, try. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Tin Candles is sometimes food. Um, yeah, yeah, really, just, once a year. yeah. Um, really looking forward to it. Really looking forward to it again. You know, Curse of Strahd was iconic, Ravenloft has always been iconic, and getting to expand that world into something that is broader and deeper and richer is something I'm really looking forward to. And again, to Riley's point, horror does not have to be grimdark, it does not have to be Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, like every other element of DD, &D, it is what you make it at your table. So just take these tools and have a good time with it. B Dave Well said, where can people find you on the internet? At B Dave Walters or War. Yeah, I'm uh, doing all kinds of stuff all the time. Just follow me at B Dave Walters. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you for being here. Melly, where can people find you online? At Melly DM, and then also on the DD Beyond Discord, because I'm there all the time. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, if, some, if someone's chatting with you uh, uh, from us on social media or on YouTube, it's probably Melly. So be nice. Be nice. Or I will, I will find you. I will absolutely find you. Uh, uh, I'm very protective of her. Riley Silverman, where can folks find you online? Find me on Twitter at Riley J. Silverman. And you can find me uh, currently on Saving Throw Show, where I am playing in the Broken Pact, not DMing, but uh, very fun. Yeah. I apologize. I am not very good at this job. And that's why someday <laughs> someone else will be doing it. But you're but a very then, beautiful, you're Joe Star. <laughs> no, well, I'm like the weird. weird. Now I'm the weird substitute teacher who like uh, uh yeah. but you're the cool substitute teacher. You're gonna sit back with your chair and tell us we can talk during study hall. It's perfect. Yeah, no, that's True. Uh, yeah, that's right. I've seen oh, that movie kids, like five times. The kids told me that they could just watch movies today, so that's what we did. Guys, you can pre-order Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft on the DD Beyond Marketplace for right now. Uh, you're gonna get a lot of cool, spoopy, spoopy goodies uh, for pre-ordering, and then you will instantly, of course, get access to the book when it releases on May 18th, 2021. Link in the description below. Make sure you click it. Let us know in the comments uh, uh, what you're most pumped about uh, for uh, to get your dread on, to get your spook on. Uh, very excited. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.